Let me wake up. Uh, uh, cold open. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mile Sword Podcast. Uh, first off, I want to say it's been it's been fun recording a bunch of podcasts in the last couple of days, but for you, it's been in the matter of a few weeks that you get to see these. Um, I think I've recorded in a matter of like this is the fourth podcast I've recorded this week. Uh, well, starting Friday, last Friday it was fun. Uh, I'm with another boo bro today. Um, the second, I, that's, this is a new record for me. I, I don't think I've ever recorded with more than two boo bros in one month. Um, <laughs> and I think, I, I think the goal is to aim to get every boo bro on one of the podcasts by the end of this year. And I think I could do it cause I already have two, but I am here with Michael from hollow thrills. What is up everybody. If you have not checked out my channel, I'm sure it'll be somewhere in the description. And then you can check out my Instagram and my Twitter. Just got to plug all that shit. No, nah, we don't. Right promote, we, don't, we don't promote that here. Ah, you plug it. Just plug it. <laughs> just plug all of it. Just gonna edit that part. Give me, out. give me, give me the subs. <laughs> I need the subs, man. Yeah, we want to get Michael to um a thousand this year. So, oh, I don't, I don't know about that. That's 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 reaching, my guy. <laughs> hey, man, it's so. You know what? It, it could happen. Maybe one month you put out like a solid video everyone wants to see, and then boom. Just go. I up. mean, I've I've had some. Well, at least by my standards, I've had some solid videos recently. Past like, <laughs> you want to know weeks? You want to know how I'm on? How I've been gaining subs fast right now? Like legitimately, no. I I put up a video like three years ago called "The History of Jason Voorhees," and that video currently stands at like a hundred and ten thousand views, <laughs> and I think that's where a lot of my subscriptions have been coming from. <laughs> I'm not even lying. Like, I don't think they can give two fucks about the rest of my content. Like, I think it's that one video that it was just like, History of Jason, maybe this guy does more of this, and they subscribed. And I'm like, nope. I haven't done a history video in quite some time, but maybe I have one planned this year. Who knows? No, but, I mean, like I said, for me personally, content's been doing pretty well. Uh, pretty much my last, I think, well, by my standards, like I said, by my standards, my last like 10 videos have all been over 100 views. So that's very good for me, at least. You, you look, and, I mean, I watch the I watch the content, dude, and you put out great stuff. You, um, I mean, that's 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 my goal that I set for myself. If the video gets 100 views, at least I'm I'm happy with that. If it does worse, then I'm kind of upset. Like like the one um, the one video I posted on Christmas Day, which is never do that. Never fucking post on Christmas Day. Worst decision I ever made. Posted the morning of Christmas. It was my um, I love Christmas movies that I went to the Gaylord Palms Resort right. to do. That shit was expensive. And I got nothing for it. I got a measly like 50 views out of that. I was like, ouch. <laughs> How is it doing now though? I mean, I mean, I, I would assume like it's still not doing good or. No, no. Having, see, that's the thing with my videos. Literally as soon as they hit a week old, they don't gain any traction. Yeah. I mean, I, I noticed that if you, uh, the longer that you go, if you put up a video and then you go like a week or two after, People are going to keep coming back to your channel and probably eventually rewatch or watch that video if they haven't already. And I noticed viewership went up when I when I would, was gone for a little bit in December. Uh, I, I had put up a video like on December like 17th or something, and that same video was just gaining viewership little by little. Not too much, but it was gaining viewership from when it put it up to when I put out another video. So, I mean, I, the way I look at it, dude, is this, man. I mean, you're, you're doing the stuff that you like to do, and... I mean, whether it's one person that watches or a hundred thousand people that watch, you know, it's like it doesn't matter. You're doing you. It's something that you can reflect on, like later on down the path, and, and you know, in the future, where like you look back and you're like, "Wow, I can't believe these are some of my first videos." Like, I watch a lot of my old stuff, dude, and I'm like, "I can't believe I made this video." Wow. <laughs> so. I mean, just within the short time that I've done it, like I can look back at my like first couple of videos. I'm like, "Wow." <laughs> These are shit. <laughs> you, learn, yeah, you learn a lot, dude, honestly. Like, and and uh, that's something I want to get into a little bit, too, is um, when you first started, man. So tell me tell me how you, you started out here because you've only been not even like a whole year yet. It's only been like half. No, half uh, a year, right? 
think middle of March, late yeah, March, something like up, that is when I started. Coming up on a year. And was yeah, because it... it was like right at the beginning of, well, no, a couple weeks into like the beginning of quarantine. Right. Is when I was like, you know what? I have nothing better to do. And um, obviously people who watch SoCal Exploring know that you're part of the SoCal Exploring team. Um, yep, SoCal Exploring, uh, Hard Nights Unscripted, Gang Gang, you know. All that fun stuff. <laughs> Uh, All that fun stuff. Did you now? Did you start the channel because uh, you knew you were going to be part of the SoCal Exploring team, or did you always want to start it prior to that? No, uh, that was actually probably almost a month in right. that that I got contacted with them. Um, no, I went into it just thinking. I'm just going to do this for myself. Just if people want to watch, people want to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's stuff that I am passionate about like because originally when i first started my channel it was just all halloween horror nights but now I've, since it got canceled this year unfortunately rip but um well last year technically I mean, at, at this got, point at least you got an hhn light i mean yes this is true but like as soon as that got got the axe uh last year i was like i'm gonna start opening up more to other things like other theme parks other haunts um, doing my Disney stuff, you know, mm. but, um, no, but yeah, it was, it was always just, uh, my first thought was just doing it for myself. Right. And, and you know what the good thing is about your channel is your, your name is hollowed thrills. So you can be both a theme park entertainment channel and a scary channel, a horror channel. Yeah. That's a, Yeah. I, I think it's, it's brilliant, honestly, like, <laughs> uh, for, for people who, who want to, explore both sides obviously you can go seasonal when it comes to halloween like hey hollow thrills you know we're, we're going to be covering all like the, the the horror events and everything but then on the off season you got the theme parks you got you know updating uh i, I know you guys do some horror nights and scripted episodes as well uh so you guys can do all that so i mean i think that's a, it's a brilliant idea on your end yeah uh, i'm actually hold up i'm gonna give you a little little tidbit of information about the actual about the channel so Let's see if I can find it. Okay, there it is. There's my initial Instagram DM with, that I had a conversation with a a Horror Nights page that I'm pretty sure a lot of people know about. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, Horror Nights ORL fan. Right. So he's actually the person that pretty much got me into like making my channel, making everything. Right. Cause I followed him on my personal um, Instagram account and was talking to him for like a couple weeks, was liking the stuff that he was putting out. And then I, and then I messaged him one day, I was like, Hey, yo, what do you think about me starting a YouTube channel? And he was like, yo man, that sounds like absolutely like something that you should do. If you're like really passionate about it, like go for it. And I was like, I mean, yeah, it seems like, like, something that would be fun to do especially during the time that i was at at that point and then um i actually talked to him about the whole name thing because i was like trying to think of names um and i have two names that i came up with one as you see now is the one that got picked Hollow thrills. Hollow thrills that one was specifically for like you said i was like it was like the, the name it allows me to cover halloween horror nights allows me to cover haunts and horror stuff and then thrills allows me to open up and venture into more stuff later on down the line right it was literally like right off the bat that was my thoughts when i made the name i was like this is perfect but the other name that i had which is never never told anybody the other name that i had other than him was halloween or no sorry it was horror nights orl like nights as in uh like knights like shining right. knight in armor because i'm i go to ucf where the the ucf knights so i was like horror knights orl orlando i was like that was my other thought but that completely was like no nah, hollow thrills is way better than that. <laughs> that that it's funny that you bring that up because i think when when we thought of the idea for the knights of horror obviously the name knights of horror if you just really look at it it's basically horror nights i mean the, yeah. the, the 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 initial you know start of the page was to talk and voice our opinion about horror nights but in the off season you can't talk about horror nights forever so we had to come up with other things um but i i think the thought process to that too is like w when you brought up the knights the whole knights thing and the shining armor and everything like that was i think the first initial like uh, you know the knights of horror is really cool but then 
obviously, uh, I, I just went with, you know, Knight spelling it with an N. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah dude, I, I, I've been there. That was the exact same thing. My thought process when, when we were starting the channel, it was like, hey, what, what? And isn't it the, always the, the hardest thing to come up with a channel name, especially like, cause you want to get something that's going to be noticed for something one day, but then eventually like you got to do something where it's going to satisfy everything that you want to create as a content creator. Yeah. I mean, I was I was honestly surprised because that the bigger issue is that when you find a name, you have to make sure that that shit is free on everything. Right. Like you have to check Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, uh, Linktree. Like you have to check like everything to make sure that you can use that name. So that's like something that I also had to think about when trying to pick a name. I was like, I was like, OK. We have the name. I'm set on it. I'm going to be crushed when somebody has it on YouTube or something. Right. No, I, I think that was a lot of the – that was the, the same with us when um, when we were looking to start up a channel. I think there's a couple – I think right now I'm, I am the Knights of Horror on YouTube. Like the, in the beginning, there was a couple other like pages that weren't active at all. And I was there, but like now, when you search up the Knights of Horror on YouTube, I'm like the first one that pops up, which I I take that with a lot of pride. I'm like I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad I beat up those other ones. But uh, kudos to those guys for keeping on going if if they are still going. Um, but it was the same thing when we when we started the Mindless Horror Podcast. Now there's so many podcasts. Like I think podcasts within the last ten years have just jumped up. Like everyone listens to them. Everyone is starting to create them. And it was it was yeah. it was hard to come up with a podcast name, especially when we wanted to revolution it around horror. Uh, and so there were so many great horror podcasts out there that we were like, shit, we can't use that. So when we finally settled on the name, the Mindless Horror Podcast, the way we thought about it was, okay, mindless. Uh, the way I look at it, mindless is a zombie. Um, our early, actually, our logo is a zombie with a microphone coming out of its head. Um, and and obviously we want to talk about horror on this podcast, whether it be having a guest, doing horror news, talking about events, um, and it's obviously a podcast. So My Own Horror Podcast came around, uh, didn't know if the name was going to stick, and a hundred and – what episode are we on? I think a hundred and like 27 or 26 episodes later, <laughs> and we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's nuts, man. I mean – YouTube and, and just the, the social media in general, it's always about finding the right name because you don't want to copy someone else. You want to you want to be your own person. You want to do your own thing. And it all starts with finding the right name that you can be recognized yeah. by. So exactly. <laughs> Thanks. But um, honestly, going back to like you talking about um, people making podcasts like left and right nowadays, honestly, I could see that in the future being where most people start out right. because it's so easy to start a podcast you just need a microphone and a computer pretty much you yeah. need a microphone and computer and you could literally just edit your audio on there and just put it out on whatever you want to do apple podcasts spotify it's even as whatever. easy too to just record audio on your phone now the exactly like anyone can do it on their phone um which it's nuts. I mean, you can honestly, there's many ways you can do it. I guess the ultimate easiest way is to just go to your camera, hit the record button, face it down in a black and record you guys talking. If you want to go yeah. the very basic, uh, but if you want to step it up and get equipment and everything, then, you know, I, it, it's something that when we first started this, I, I, I had mics from doing previous channels that just weren't successful. Um, and I was like, well, you know, I have these microphones, let's do something with these. Um, and I think when we started doing the podcast, it was just about like, we had, we had the very basics. We just had two microphones and the computer. Uh, now I've stepped it up, you know, over the years I've gotten more microphones, uh, tried different softwares. Um, now I got a full on like board and, and like microphones and everything. So I could take my podcast on the go, uh, I think a lot of my early podcasts, especially pre-pandemic, you know, I, I was a big fan of having in-studio guests. But I, obviously, as times are going right now, you have to adapt to something new and try to keep the content flowing with the podcast, whether it be via Zoom or if you find a safe, socially distant a way to record the podcast in person, which I don't think I've done at all this pandemic. <laughs> yeah, honestly, Zoom this year has been a godsend for podcasts. Right. No, I think it's for, people, for everything, honestly. Yeah, I mean that too. But like, 
now you can like it, instead of having like in-person podcasts you can now it doesn't matter you can just be face to face over zoom right. and it's so much easier to combine everything in there you already have your video and everything you don't have to i mean some people still record it separately like we i mean for us uh for harness and scripted we record everything separately through obs right. but i mean it's still it's better to see that you're on here on the screen and be able to talk to you like that right no and and i i know there's other ways of like if you know a lot of the content creators who are you're doing a show with if if you know you hit them up and be like hey listen so this is what's going to happen you know if you want to get the best quality thing you just throw on the zoom in the background when you record on your camera or whatever and then if worse comes to worse you still record the zoom to have a backup you know what's funny to me too is like early on in the pandemic we were using uh skype all the time Ooh. and yeah it, it was good in the beginning and then like when zoom came out like zoom just took over zoom is literally mm. like the video conferencing uh meetup whatever you want to call it these days this is like the area to do everything on now it, it's, it's yeah. amazing how in a matter of months zoom is just the number one like face-to-face -face broadcasting thing now yeah honestly it's it was forever ago that i used skype and like i had completely gotten rid of it off my computer and then this came out and i was like wow i remember the last time i used skype comparative to this this is a thousand times better than skype oh yeah down, like, skype is like terrible skype for us was good in the beginning but then I, I there's was, just a lot of connection issues with skype there is because i when we use zoom one time and then like i, I didn't have uh because i i pay for zoom i i do the uh i think i do the monthly thing just so i can get the i can unlimited time unlimited time i think it's up to like 24 hours the one i pay for and i don't i don't need more than that so yeah. um you know i do that but there was one time we didn't pay it and we did we went back on skype to just try to to see what it was like and it was horrible dude yeah it was bad like so i i think we opted out on just doing it on google uh google uh hangouts because it was way better than skype but it wasn't nearly as good as zoom but it, it, it mm -hmm. got the job done um but yeah dude it, it's amazing how how much i mean and it connects not only you know other people but it connects us obviously we're on each we're both on different coasts you're on the east coast i'm on the west coast so you know i mean it, it's just a way to like here we are you know what i mean like if you would have said yeah. if you would have said like 20 years ago that this was going to be a thing i think mm -hmm. i would have called bullshit on it as a <laughs> honestly man but like i i applaud the people that like ahead of time were like yo i'm gonna invest in zoom right Oh, they're making a fortune now, dude. They're making a fortune. Yeah. Every I don't think I know I don't think I ever hear anyone say, let's Skype anymore. I think everyone just is on Zoom. Yeah, Zoom. Yeah. yeah. I mean they Zoom. do it they do it for jobs, they do it for freaking podcasts, they do it for everything. You know what I mean? Conferences, yeah. like Zoom is the number one uh video uh FaceTiming platform these days. Uh and, and they they have commercials, they have everything, man. So I mean, I applaud Zoom for, for making a solid app that actually works without <laughs> internet connections and everything, man. I love it. I mean, I'm like one multi-million dollar corporation that I know that can't make a fucking app to save their life. <laughs> Disney. <laughs> uh, uh, my Disney experience. Uh, well, oh, sorry about that. Uh, it sounds like you need some water there, buddy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me get let me get some. <laughs> Uh, obviously, with Hollow Thrills, uh, it comes. You, you mentioned you were a, a Horror Nights fan, man. So, so when's the first year you ever attended Halloween Horror Nights? So, since I am an out-of-state student for UCF, right. I am not actually from Florida. Right. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. So, before I had even come down to go to UCF, had no idea what the hell Horror Nights was. Right. So, I have gone grown to love it the past three years that i've gone just because i have now found out about it so 27 was my first year and then i went 27 28 29 but i didn't know that it was a like 27 i only went one night because i didn't know much about it i was right. just told by my friends um because i was playing quidditch at the time at, at ucf like yes we have harry, a quidditch team harry potter yes quidditch? harry potter quidditch yes Dude, that is legit i would pay to see that um look it up uh nearly headless nights on youtube 
there is some there there's some videos of our games from like way back a uh, couple like I think a couple years ago. Yeah. It, I, it, is it harder without the magic? <laughs> so instead of a broom, you use a PVC pipe. Okay. And you hold that between your legs, and then the quaffle is a slightly deflated volleyball, right. and the bludgers are dodgeballs, and you don't have a bat. And, no one and, gets a bat. And, and the golden snitch is that is that. Available? Oh, the snitch is a person. A snitch is a person with yellow shorts on, <laughs> that has a tennis ball in a sock stuffed down the back of their pants. And you have to get that. You have to get the, the thing off the back of their pants. That's great. And pretty much, the snitch can literally do anything to you. They can grab you and throw you to the ground. <laughs> I'm assuming this they can, is the fastest person they know too. Either fastest or strongest. Damn. And they can literally like they can grab your broom from between your legs and pull it out. And if you come off your broom, you have to go back to hoops and touch the hoops and then come back. Oh my god, there's so, so much rules to Quidditch. Oh yeah, there is a bunch of rules to Quidditch. Um honestly, so I got into I've only done I did Quidditch for two years and then stopped because they got a little bit too serious and I was only doing it for fun. Right. They, they got a whole like coach and everything. I was like, yeah, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> uh, this isn't fun anymore. This man actually like cares. <laughs> I was only doing it to freaking have fun. I feel like I was only this doing it to pass the time in college, man. <laughs> yeah. I was only doing it to pass the time in college and do something other than just sit in my room. Yeah. Now this man's making it like a chore. <laughs> But anyways, like the first two years like that I played, it was really fun. They have like they have regionals and nationals and everything. Like they have they have a Quidditch World Cup. Did oh, you know that? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that was in Harry Potter though, too. They had a World Cup, didn't they? Yeah, they have a World in Cup, Goblet but like Yeah, but this is like they have there's Quidditch national teams. This is like an actual thing you can like in real world in the real world. Yeah, that's cool. Like that's it's freaking wild. Um but um yeah, the Quidditch nationals normally are in Texas. Did but, you ever go? Uh, we made it the two years that I played. I didn't go but either years. Damn. Because unfortunately, um, well, you, yeah, we have to pay for our own travel because right. UCF doesn't view us as a sport club. That's bullshit. Why, but for one reason. And that is? Well, two reasons. It's co-ed and it's full contact. So it's football. Football's not co-ed. It's full contact. That's the thing. You can have a 200-pound guy tackling a 200-pound guy, but you can't have a 200-pound guy tackling a 110-pound girl. <laughs> That's not okay in their eyes, which is why they don't want to give us money. <laughs> That's bullshit. They're I'm like, saying, That's if, unsafe. If they're, sign, if they're signing up for it, they know what they're signing up for. That's all I'm going to say on that topic. But, yeah, so you had to pay for your own your own flights and everything out there, so I was like... No, I'm not. I'm not going all the way out there. I don't yeah. care enough for that. Anyway, I don't even know how we got on the, the story of Quidditch, but that was oh, um, horror nights. Yeah. How so... many years I'd went? So, anyways, yes, twenty-seven. I went one night. Went with the people from Quidditch. Right. They told me about it, and that's how I found out about it. I went on Halloween night. It was the first night that I went. Right. Awesome, dude. Uh, better what? Better, and... better night to go. And I try to make it a a, a thing like. Every, like th all three years I've gone on Halloween night. I try to go on Halloween night just cause that's honestly to me, other than the last day, the, the scare actors are at their like peak performance on Halloween night. Yeah. To, like yeah. first day. Well, not really first day. First day is kind of good. They're like getting, but the, the thing is there so much moves around in horror nights throughout the run of it mm -hmm. like you have scare actors move around you have scares that move around you have different changes um, and mazes happen like, and all that stuff changes and mazes changes in costumes changes in scare zones like at the beginning of horror nights in 20 at 29 for depths of fear over here right um there was so many of those uh, mouth broders or whatever the hell they were called like the big fish head people right there were so many of those at the beginning of the event and towards the end, there was maybe one or two throughout the entire maze because of the fact that the costume was designed poorly. But um, <laughs> yeah, the costume was designed very badly. It kept like falling apart. The people couldn't see in it. So they kept giving them like they kept putting less and less in the house. Right. As the event went on. But the, see, that's the like, but that's the thing that changes throughout the entire event. Like you have those little things like that, which made that house go from pretty decent to absolute shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, I mean, obviously with Horror Nights in Orlando, um, I, I've yet to go, and I really want to go just to just see the other coast, obviously, because I, I want to see more originals. I like originals. Um, yeah, that's – I mean, it's going to be interesting for me coming up, though, because I graduate – in may this right. may so then i'd be moving back home so i'm like all right gotta start saving money so that's, i can now that's what so i, was I can ask come you. down so if you when you're done with school uh, are you going to try every year to keep that tradition going to keep going hhn i will tr my goal is to at least take a week and go right. for an entire week to not just, just experience hhn but also the parks as well Mm, I don't know too much. I don't. I don't really care that much about the parks, to be honest. Just going to HHN for an like the entire week, because normally when I go to HHN, I go to HHN. I think last year, last year was like my full like full out year. I went freaking first um, first day all the way through last day, and I went um, I think twice a week. Oh, nice! Last okay. year, so I went twice a week every week. Through, uh, starting with the opening night to closing night okay. it was amazing uh 28 28 i did that but i started in october because i still once again hadn't quite figured out how horror nights worked and when it started right. like i found out like second week of october that horror nights was going on i was like oh shit <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> as oh, it was already it was, it was already a month in i'm like oh yeah horror nights it started up no it's it's been going on sir you're like michael <laughs> how dare i forget <laughs> um, but, so i mean even even with only going for like a couple weeks and for 28 28 is still probably my favorite year that i've gone to right like the original and the the IP houses for 28 were amazing. 28, 2018. Uh, we had... Universal Monsters was over at Hollywood that year. That was the first year we had it. We had Trick or Treat. It was Poltergeist 2, wasn't it? We had Poltergeist. Right. We had Stranger Things 1. Yes. We had Halloween, Halloween 4. 4. Yeah. We had Carnival Graveyard... Um, dead exposure. Was that the first purge as well? Did that come? No, um, that was, that was no, that was that was Blumhouse two was that year. Yes. So that was Death Day and Purge. Oh, you had Death know. Day and Purge. We had Death Day and Unfriended. Yeah. Uh, um, and then what? Oh, and then Slaughter what Cinema. Was, what was in the? I'm movie? trying to think. What was? I'm trying to think of the property because Poltergeist and Hap and. Horrors of Blumhouse 2 were in the back lot, but I'm trying to think of that third one that was in the back lot. Trick or Treat was, was Parade Trick Building. Was Mummy Q. Oh, Seeds. Seeds of Extinction was was New Parade Building. I heard that was a Dead good one. Seeds was, honestly, Seeds was really good for, for personally for me for one reason only, because I it, get, it got me a whole bunch. Right. Every every time that I went through it, because how I go through houses, I like to ruin the house for me. Pretty much is how I go. Has how I go through houses. I like to point out scares and be like, "That's where it is." But the thing with with Seeds of Extinction is all the characters are wearing like ghillie suits and shit. Right. So it's hard to pick out someone literally sitting right in front of you when you can't see them because they're just camouflaged so well. Right. Which is why I enjoyed Seeds of, Seeds of Extinction so much is because I couldn't get my bearings enough to be like, oh, there's a person there. No, I have no idea that they're there. They're blended in so well. So our event was Stranger Things Trick or Treat. The first, so I was right. The first purge did come that year. Uh, Walking Dead, Traction, Poltergeist, Halloween 4, Horrors of Blumhouse, Chapter 2, Universal Monsters, Music by Slash. Easily the best maze hands down that year was Universal Monsters Music by Slash. And then that was the last year of our Terror Tram, which was Hollywood Harry's Dread Time Stories, which was a good one. Um, yeah, I feel... And Scare Zone yeah, for feel... Holidays in Hell, <laughs> Trick or Treat, Monster Masquerade, Hell's Harvest, Toxic Toxic Sick Tunnel. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and then the show was the Jabberwockies, which no one gives a shit about. Yeah, let me see. Ours was, okay, so. HHN 28. Uh, I got this. No, I got this. You got this. I got this from memory. I'm just gonna Ready? look at. I'm just gonna see, it and then like, if you need Ready? the help, it's here. Production Central, where the where the music stages was, uh, 
Stranger Things one. Okay. okay. Then you move on to the Jimmy Fallon queue, which was Carnival Graveyard. Then you move to um, back left, which was Scary Tales. Uh, um, Scary Tales. The fuck is it? <laughs> Deadly Ever After. Yep. Then right next to that was Poltergeist. Um, okay. Then over at the Men in Black uh, tent was Blumhouse. Blumhouse yes. 2, the second Blumhouse with Death Day and Purge. Right. Then moving to the first um, Sprung Tent was Slaughter Cinema. Other Sprung Tent was Dead Exposure. New Parade Building was Seeds of Extinction. Old Parade Building was Trick or Treat. And uh, Shrek Q was Halloween 4. You got them all. And then uh, although they, scare they, zones. they 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 uh they do uh they say the different locations like Stranger Things Sound Stage Twenty Two Trick or Treat Parade Warehouse Dead Exposure Sprung Tent One Slaughter Cinema Sprung Tent Two Carnival Graveyard yeah. Sound Stage Twenty Yeah you know you but you know all the locations you know yeah I know like I don't know the actual names of the the sound stages I just know like that, the location of them like where the 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 sign is and where the beginning of the line is. That was the year I was super jealous of Orlando because that was the year they had a Killer Clowns from Outer Space scare zone. Yes, we had Killer Clowns from Outer Space scare zone which was right outside of Transformers. Right. And then what was the other scare zones that we had? Oh, we had That was probably one of my favorite years for scare zones because we had freaking we had vamp 85 in new york which is one of my favorite scare zones shelby just released a uh a print for that for new year's was the uh it, the ball dropped at the top of every hour right yes and they did yeah, like the ball dropped and, and they did a whole dance routine and then and then a whole bunch of vamps ran after you and they all they played was freaking 80s like rock 80s pop throughout the entire zone i was yeah. like yes i was vibing with that that was a good one. Uh, and then they had like different '80s themed like vamp characters. They had like Prince that was walking around. Now, did they have a live band too? Or they had a setup for no. a live band? Like, they had a setup it. for the live. They had, they had a setup for a live band, but it wasn't. It was like the band got killed. Okay, so, so yeah, there they was were a bunch of dead. like people impaled by like microphone stands and stuff like that. That's okay. Yeah, that, that was one of the yeah, set pieces. I do remember seeing like drums and then like instruments and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was another one I really wanted to see. Um, that was the same uh -huh. area where I think Zombieland was, right? Yeah, Zombieland Land last year, which was ugh, really. Not uh, good. I, was, I mean, there was a lot of cool. Like they had a lot of cool scenes that from the movie that looked cool. Like when he was surrounded by the zombies in the little freaking game, and then the the freaking. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't a big fan. I wasn't a big fan of the scare zone. I mean, compared to the last, the two years before, which was Vamp 85, and then what was my first year? 27. What the fuck was... Yeah, no, but what was in their first year? Oh, look it up. Where Vamp 85 was, right? Yeah, that's uh, New York. Uh, yeah, that would be New York area. New York area, that was... I like how this podcast just become us reminiscing on the past. I miss ATHN. It's great. It's uh, great. Man. New York was the purge. Oh, that, that was oh, a cool well, purge too because they actually had a see, truck come out and everything. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I enjoyed that, but like, see, that's the thing. People hate on that scare zone because that was like our second or third year having it, having like a, a purge scare zone. So people by that time were sick of it. But me just coming into the event for my first year, I was like, oh, this is fantastic. They have like an auction thing where they're auctioning off people. I'm like, this is freaking cool as hell. Yeah, and that's what I liked like, about it too because we didn't have that over here. You had like a truck that pull up and he'd open up the truck and there'd be people behind it and they'd be auctioned. Like it was cool. Yeah. It was just like a uh, film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was like – and then they had like cars and motorcycles just come out yeah. and I was like, that's so fucking cool. Yeah. You guys did Purge uh, right that year. Yeah. Um, that was also a scare zone in 27 that Connor used as an original for Maze Treatments, which was Invasion, uh, based off uh, oh, 19, in the year 1955, the UFO. I hated that scare zone. Did you hate People it because it, it looked too cheesy, or did, why did you, didn't, you didn't like it? It just didn't – it shouldn't have been there. It, it was fit. too – 
they just didn't know see the thing is that area was small to begin with right. and then they put that giant ass ufo there that yeah. constricted the space even more san francisco isn't a big area for a scare zone the way that they did it for um is that rob what zombie used? i was gonna say they used that same area for rob zombie Rob's the way they did it for Rob Zombie was perfect. They didn't have massive set pieces. They had a couple small stages, couple small set pieces. They had the Dragula, they had the the Skull Throne, Dead Girl, all that stuff. They had Living Dead Girl. They had like they had enough set pieces that were like small enough, but like still like told a story. Where that massive UFO just took up so much space and just constricted everything. Right. Like if you look at videos of that scare zone you'll see that it's like literally a bottleneck and it's crowded as hell. And which is why like, I'm like, I can't understand the story of the scare zone because I can't see scare actors. They just look like they blended into the people. <laughs> Cause other than the aliens, they had, um, they had like army people as well, but you couldn't really pick them out of a crowd. Now, you could pick the aliens out of a crowd though. You, you chose actually the best year to start going to HHN. And it's amazed that once Eddie showed me it, I was just in, mesmerized by, which was dead waters. Dead Waters is my favorite maze of all time. I love the giant freaking the like, boat facade. The boat is yeah. fantastic. I love the whole like voodoo, like Louisiana swamp. I love that whole right. idea, and I, and I like. I'm just. It looked beautiful I, when you looks, walked through it. Looks it. Beautiful. Yeah. It had scares. I was like, this is perfect. I think I went through that house once uh, because I only was able to go through it once because right. I only went one night. But fell in love with that house, and to this day, I still have yet to have a house that's not that's nearly as beautiful and as scary. Eddie told it's me it's always like one the, or the other. It was, it was. There were some parts that were actually like slanted too, right? Yeah, like it felt like because it felt like because the boat was like actually mm -hmm. sinking, so it felt slanted yep. when you walk through it. Which I thought that really brings the story to life right there. If you're walking through this abandoned boat that's nearly sinking and it's yep. slanted, and you're walking and it feels slanted, like that's really cool. Now one of the the scares that I remember the most out of that house was you're walking on this like little like pier bridge that's going like back and forth and you see like you see ghillie suit people. Right. So I stare at one and then all of a sudden on the opposite side of me steps up another ghillie suit man. I'm like <gasps> <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> reaction, dude. I that's like <laughs> I gotta go. Um, that's like, that's like, to this day, probably one of the best scares that I've had at HHM was just that because I'm like focusing on this one on the left, and all of a sudden, I the one that I didn't see on the right just comes out of nowhere. I'm like, all right, well, there goes my pants. <laughs> I just love that reaction. You're like, <laughs> it was like slow motion, like it was coming towards you, but you knew it, but you were still scared. Yeah. That just... right there is the Instagram freaking preview right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh but my God. I see, I went with a massive group that year, right. which was honestly, if like, if you've never been to HHN, like going with a massive group is fantastic because you like have, you have a good time. Personally, I go a lot alone just cause it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. I can literally go whenever the hell I want. I and think, I don't uh, have to worry about dragging people along with me, which is another reason why I go to theme parks by myself. Right. Because I don't have to, I can just stick to the schedule that I want to do. I can get in, do the shit that I want to do and get out. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny that you brought up, you know, it's fun to go with people because the one thing that I, I cannot wait to and, and look forward to is when all the booze bros are together and we all just walk into HHN and just have a fun time. Yeah, I want to do an RIP con uh, tour with the freaking Boo Bros, man. That'd, that'd be, be great. fun too. Imagine just having our own tour to ourselves. Like that'd be a great. Freaking, that would be fantastic. Just us full just freaking Boo Bros HSN. tour. It's just gonna be cameras everywhere. Everyone has a camera. Everyone's audio is gonna be fucked. Yes. You know, it's it's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna overlap every audio. Yeah, we just went through. Yeah, we just went through. Yeah, just we, you know, it's just gonna be every. It's gonna be great. Um, oh god i cannot wait for that day i mean i'm hoping if, if everything you know goes good this year we can all meet up at hhn orlando because uh i i said to myself if i have to go alone i'm not missing the 30th anniversary of, oh no hell no you know, i mean obviously you know a lot of stuff got released and leaked um that that promised and i can't say promised but it looked like it was going to be a great lineup this year um and i'm hoping they they bring back a lot of that stuff they couldn't showcase uh 
last year's season to this year. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm even if they get rid of stuff, I'm well okay. Part of me is like I want them to get rid of the houses that they showed us this year, minus Beetlejuice, because the heck was only only there for two days. But like the other two, uh, Bride of Frankenstein lives and um, Tooth Fairy. As much as I want them to get rid of them, just so we can get something new next year and not have recycled stuff, I also want. I'm also like, but if they bring them back, they can adjust stuff, mm-hmm. and then we can get scares that were supposed to be in there but couldn't due to capacity issues. Right. And and them having to incorporate masks into the costumes. Right. Like you, there's so like I kept telling everybody when we went through them, like something just seems like it's missing, and I think it was the the actual like tooth fairy character. Right. And I think the because did you see the um the quote unquote scare zone T-shirt? No, the scare zone T-shirt that we that we had I that had like the pumpkin too. lord. Oh wait, yes, I did. I did. I saw that. And then it had like down like here like spe- with like special guests or something, and it was like this weird gremlin looking thing. I, everybody I've talked to is, seems to think that that was supposed to be the Tooth Fairy, and that the reason they didn't have it is because with the prosthetics they couldn't fit a mask in with it. Right. That that was supposed to be the Tooth, tooth Fairy. Fairy. Right. N- and all those kids that were in the actual maze were just people that he's turned into those creatures to right. do his bidding. Yeah, I, I would like to. I, now, I was not. I mean, and then it's obviously it's different when you see it on video compared to walking through it in person. Uh, oh yeah. Me personally, I don't think I was too much of a fan of Tooth Fairy, but I would still, no matter what, walk through it just to you know, because I always every time I go to Horror Nights, I walk through everything. So, I'm I'm, I'm one of those Tooth Fairy st- uh, stands, man. I, oh, yeah. I loved you like, it. You like Tooth Fairy? I loved I loved Tooth Fairy more than uh than I did Brides. I, I Honestly, just, Tooth Fairy out of the three houses that we got this year, personally, Tooth Fairy was my favorite. I, I and people ha- and people anymore. people hate me for that. What the, what do you mean the art the facade? Uh, yeah, like in the beginning when you walk in, I'm not a fan of that style art. That was the only thing that kind of. <laughs> Wait, the pop up book facade. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that. Get out. It's my podcast. What are you talking about? Get out. No, this is my <laughs> podcast now. This is the Hollow Thrills the show. The Hollow Thrills Mindless Horror Podcast. That's a long name. Yes. The Mindless Thrills Podcast. The, yes. Because it's my show um, now, man. But I, I, I think, I, I mean, because so this is this is how I got to experience Tooth Fairy this year. Through Roblox. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, honestly, it wasn't bad. Did you I go through that, that one uh, that one park that did, re- did it designed it? Yeah, yeah. I did. I did one of the free nights this year, right? Because I because I was like I want to go through them, and I it was it was pretty cool. I actually was like I'm surprised how good this is for it just being Roblox. I yeah, I discovered it early on because I found it about I found the Universal theme park first, and I'm like this looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the way they did this, and then they announced they're going to be doing a Halloween Horror Nights event. I'm like for people who can't. Or are you know just don't feel comfortable going out during hot season? This is how you get your fix this year. For like five bucks, you got the unlimited frequent fear pass. Uh, with yeah. Front of the line, so it was like it's a steal right there. Yeah. Um, By the time I got around to doing it, it was like I think it was only like a week left. So I was just like, I'll just wait until the free night that's coming up, right. and just do everything that one night, and then that's it. Yeah. That that first night was insane though, dude. Every it was shit, the, shit, the servers kept crashing, and you could not like for the first hour or two, it was just impossible to get in. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it was fun. So, uh, to wrap up that horror night section, uh, hands down, favorite year, favorite maze, and favorite scare zone. Well, I'm pretty sure we've covered most of those while talking about this, but I'll yeah, I'll just break it down because just to, in recap, just put in one section there. So, favorite year, twenty eight. Twenty eight. Out of the three years that I've gone, 28 is my favorite, both, both originals and IPs. Right. Just overall, that was a great lineup because yeah. the other two years, they had some weak points, but this was just an all-around good lineup as right. far as houses and scare zones, IPs, and originals. Um, favorite house of all time, Dead Waters. Dead Waters. Dead Waters because it had the perfect beauty and horror in the same house, they normally just have one or the other. What about the, not sm- both. What about the smells? Did it smell like you were at a swamp? It's been three years, man. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember, <laughs> man. You're going to go to a swamp one day and be like, that smells like dead waters. <laughs> no, there's only one smell that you can never 
you, you you always know what it smells like and that's the fog man the fog you know what i i got two smells it's the fog and when you go to the event like opening night and walk through the mazes you could still smell the wood and everything that, <laughs> that they just the fresh paint see speaking about smells though the one smell that i never got that people complained about last year was um well, two years ago now 2019 29 right. was um uh, Nightingale's blood pit. They said it smelled like rotting flesh, and I don't remember that. I don't ever remember what? smelling rotten flesh. And I was like, "Wasn't that the goal you... though? If it's supposed to be like a like a blood pit arena?" Yeah, I mean that like that's the goal. But people are like, "Oh, it smells terrible." I'm like, I don't remember smelling anything like bad enough where I wouldn't enjoy the maze. All right. That was probably one of my more favorite mazes that year, just because I got the best scares out of that maze that year. I'd say one of the worst smells I ever went through was when uh, they had Creep Show here in 2019, and we were walking through. There's a scene that it's in the show where this like this dad becomes this like nasty fungus creature or whatever, and it just yeah. smelled walking through that. It looked nasty too, just the whole design. But they did a good job doing that. Mm -hmm. Let's see what, and then what was the other question? Yeah, uh, scare, scare zone. zone. So my top two scare zones, because I can't really, I, down you know, I'll, I can narrow it down between the two. It's up to you. I mean, if you want to mention both, it's up to you. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll mention them both because we've already mentioned one, but the other one we haven't mentioned. First year, 27, Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat was good. It Trick or Treat good. was a fantastic scare zone. It fit so well in Central Park. Like, I... Other than other than the other one that I'm about to talk about, there has not been a scare zone that I can say fit a a area of the park better right. than Trick or Treat fit Central Park. Yeah, that 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 scare zone was made to be there. The decorations the other, look good and everything. Decorations fit perfectly in there. there. Was in like the bushes and stuff, you know. Yeah, it was. It looked amazing yeah. and worked so well in that area. Um, but the other one that I want to mention, though, that is my other favorite, is something I mentioned earlier, Vamp 85. Vamp 85. Vamp 85, New York, New Year's Eve, literally makes the most sense out of any scare zone I've ever been through. And it's the 80s. I mean, it's the 80s. The 80s are great. Yes. Like, literally, the decade of all, to end all decades. It had is the slasher 80s. films, you had freaking comedy films, you had the great music. You had the, hair bands, you had... Ridiculous style, I mean, it's it's all there. Oh, yeah. It's all but, there. Like, I could literally sit in that scare zone. I could literally just have gone to HHN and just sat in that scare zone on a night. That's how much I loved that scare zone. Just listen to the music and watch Just listen to the music people. and just watch people get scared. Yeah. That's and just best. talk to the scare actors, man. That's great. Uh, you, that's how we got a lot of people from Ghost Town on this damn uh, Not Scary Farm. We just sat there, and if they were free, we'd give them a business card. Be like, hey, you know, we want to do a podcast with you. Come on. So just saying, <laughs> make some hollow throw business cards, you know, just sit down. Be like, hey, we want to do a podcast with you. you nudge, know, nudge, wink, wink. You know, uh, <laughs> Horn Nights and Scripted. Heard of it? No? Well, you're about to. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think uh, someone... I think someone – didn't they do like a Vamp 55 like years ago? Yeah, Vamp 55 was at – Like 20 – 20 – no, it's not 25. 25 was the anniversary. I want to say 26, but I don't think that's right. That would have been – I don't think that one was probably nearly – No. People think it was better. Hold I, up. I would like to see uh, a, like a Vamp 75 and 95 because those are good decades Vamp, too. Cause, oh, okay. Vamp 55 was at 26 in Hollywood. Okay. Oh, it took place in the in Hollywood? In, it was like – In the Hollywood section okay. of the park. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean personally, I like the 80s more than the 50s, so kind of – Vamp 2015. <laughs> no, uh, if you watched Horror Nights and Scripted, you would have heard about the uh, the one that I made. Vamp 2075. Freaking, what are we doing? Was, cyberpunk up in here now? <laughs> yes. Yes, it actually was. It was Cyberpunk Vamps. Did you, did you, uh, now I gotta say, did you like Cyberpunk the game? Haven't played it. It's I'd too wait. buggy for me. Yeah, wait. I mean, it's too it, buggy it, for me. I think it's a fantastic story. I like, I love the story and, and the overall game is beautiful, but yeah, it, it's got, it needs a lot of fixing. And yeah. it, it probably, it, honestly, it probably, I've heard it's the most beautiful on PC. 
Yeah, I don't know if my PC could run that. My PC is good, but I don't know if it's that good. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to buy a new PC just to run that beautiful game. <laughs> Maybe yeah, this this PC is specifically for cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> we have a PC over here. Well, what's that one for? Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. <laughs> <That's it>? Yeah. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, before I let there's you go, one thing downloaded on it. <laughs> cyberpunk. <laughs> before I let you go, brother, uh, I gotta ask because I, and I and I've been I, I've been lagging on this question a lot lately, and I, I gotta get back into it. Uh, I ask I usually ask all my guests before I, I let them go. Uh, obviously, it's a horror podcast. What's your favorite horror movie of all time? Ooh, oh man, put me on the spot, man. I have to, I have to think about that. Hold on, it's always now, the hardest on. question of the podcast. You know what I mean? I mean, there's. I kind of want to do a cop out just because it's the one I watch the most, the franchise I watch the most. Halloween. 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 I love love Halloween. Yeah. 1978 film is. A masterpiece. The second film, John Carpenter just did it because they paid him. Yeah, he was. I think he even came out and said he was like drunk when he wrote that, and he regrets a lot of the shit yeah. he wrote into it. That's why they did 2018 yep. the way they did it. <laughs> yeah, they pretty much were like, I, he's like, I want to move away from the boogeyman. They're like, here's money, and he's like, fuck it, I'll do it. All right, where's the alcohol? <laughs> where's the Jack Daniels? Or it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> And it still was a fantastic movie, nonetheless. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, still, still a great movie, but just this the original is better. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> hands down. I mean, and then like, like I'm that's probably gonna be yeah, the Hall Halloween as a franchise is probably, but the '78 is probably my favorite Halloween movie because I just yeah. favorite horror movie. Sorry, but I, like I just watch because I watch it every year. Maybe tw uh, twice uh, or three times a year. You ever like, come down to California? We're gonna make a whole day of just taking to all the filming locations of that film. I would love that. <laughs> I could take you to the original house I, that's now a freaking business of some sort, but they they kept it. It's not in the original yeah, spot, but yeah, I know. I heard that they moved it to a completely different spot, and it's like it, it's like, it's like a corner. real estate. It's like, it like it's like this is the house, and then there's like two streets that go like that way. And then yeah. there's a turn, and that's the house. But I mean, it's still iconic to go to. Yeah, I know. Um, now, honestly, I've been looking into going over there. I mean, the only issue is right now college. I mean, well, that, and there ain't really much to do over there. Other than... Yeah, there, you, you, you're better off on the East Coast, dude. There's way more to do on the East Coast. But like, uh, if stuff ever opens up, like haunt season, I would love to take you guys. And it goes for all the booze bros on the East Coast. I want to show you guys Not Scary Farm, a uh, fantastic event. Uh, obviously, yeah. Halloween Horror Nights and Dark Harbor. Another great events, um, yeah, and maybe if we can squeeze did, in Hayride. <laughs> hey man, I keep trying to convince the the boys, uh, Adrian and Scott, to to come up to to PA for a little bit. They got some theme parks We've, up there, don't they? Got the Hershey. Got Hershey Park, man. I went I went there. They hooked me up. I was so surprised about that. That was probably the coolest thing that's happened this year. They gave you media or what? They they gave me media tickets. They I gave me two media tickets to go to the Christmas event. And that's the good thing, too. And that's the same thing that goes with Eddie. He's got his Bush Gardens out there in, in Williamsburg. Uh, I think because not a lot of people cover the the parks that they when they see that you're the one person that's really kind of growing and going out there to cover them, that they'll look at that and be like, oh, he's promoting our park. Let's let's invite him out to, you know, as a, as a nice gesture, you know, like, hey, yeah. we notice you. I was literally like, I was like, oh, I want to go to their event, but I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll send an email. Let's see what happens. Sent an email, and they're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, come Why not? By. We got you. Come by. We'll hook you up with two tickets. And I'm like, uh, I didn't think I'd get this far. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, where do I go from here now? Do I do I reply? Uh, do I just show up? <laughs> I was expecting just to get the cold shoulder and not to get a response. I yeah, know. Isn't it nice when you get a response? It's just like, wow. Even if it's like a, like a polite no, like it's still good to get something. Exactly. I mean, it could be like, uh, you know, Scream and Stream slash Jolly Creek that fucking never responded to me. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I'm mad at them, man. They, they should know that I'm mad at them. I bet. I bet. They freaking invite people that have less subscribers than me and less views than me, but just because they ride their dick on on social media, they get invited. Never again. I'm sorry. I'm not like that. Never again. 
Never again. I'm not going over there. I don't care. I don't care about whatever their events are. So, Michael, all across the board, it's Hollow Thrills for Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Hollow Thrills, huh? Yep, and T Public. And T Public. Go check out his new website. Get awesome merch. We got this. Actually, I think I changed it to it. So it's now it's just the logo is just tiny on the the chest because that's something the agent told me to do. But it has a thing on the back though. It's got. It's just got like the the lo- like the name logo just on the back real small it's really cool though you know what the sad part is i won't be able to get one because that fucking website doesn't have my t-shirt size so sorry about that <laughs> hey but i got my other merch too hey. got that got that cool hollowed haunt tour t-shirt oh but i went to almost all of those things you, uh, you still in you still in for me i did that in 2019 mm. buddy yeah yeah. Well, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> it was kind of like, yeah. Well, good for you. And your boy. The All Hell Break Loose Tour 2019, bruh. Oh, yeah. The Hollowed Haunt Tour. That's a cool name, this year isn't was it? The Evil's My Friend World or the Haunt Tour, not World Tour. It's li- I, literally, I'm going to be honest with you. It's probably just going to be Hollowed Haunt Tour 2021. 20, I'm probably I just going to keep the name. I, I steal my names from famous songs from punk bands and stuff that I. Think go well with horror, so I don't know, man. Just the Hollow Haunt tour like just, it though, just gonna stick. It's cool... just gonna stick. There you go. Maybe we'll have a and... maybe we'll have a co-headlining tour one day. You know what I mean? Hey, one Pennsylvania, only... Pennsylvania haunts are gonna be lit this year. One night only. They're the gonna be bros at freaking Halloween Horror Nights. I, I already, I'm already thinking about all the haunts that I know that are up in PA that I can try to shoot them a, uh, an email and be like, hey. Wanna wanna give me some tickets? Some see if tickets. I can go out. You know, Penhurst, come on, hit me up. Penhurst Asylum, uh, Field of Screams, hit me up. Bates Motel, come on. That's awesome, man. I, I look what else? To it, man. What else we got up there? We got we got all that. Uh shit. What's another? Oh, freaking Eastern State Penitentiary. I'm just gonna hit them all. Hit them all, man. All the haunts that I know. Go to freaking Dorney Park. They have their Halloween haunt. There you go. Dorney Park, also known as the the very, 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 very shitty Knott's Berry Farm. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Because it's owned by Cedar Fair. (laughs) Cedar Fair, man. I used to work for that company. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast, man. Really good to finally get you on. Uh, Get the name out there even further. It was a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Always welcome back, brother. Um, If you guys enjoyed today's episode of the podcast, hit that like button and leave some comments down from Michael. Show him your love. And go subscribe to his channel. Tell him Knights of Horse sent you. Um, If you guys are also new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video. Follow us on social media, at Knights of Horror on Twitter and at the Knights of Horror on Instagram. And check out our merch. Links in the bio. We got a freaking awesome, cool NWO-inspired t-shirt because I'm a wrestling fan. And I wanted to do that. So check that out. Um, Also, be sure to tune in next week with another episode with another guest. We have tons of these planned out. Hope you guys enjoyed. My name's Anthony from the Knights of Horror. I'm your host of the Mindless Horror Podcast, and I will see you guys real soon.